guys, uh, Marco here from Aviator Life CS. Hope you're doing well. Welcome back to my channel. Today we will complete the flight controls system videos. We are going to talk about uh, abnormal operations and we are going to review the non-normal checklist. Just keep in mind that in one of our previous videos about flight controls, we talked about some abnormals. I'm going to leave a link here so you can go there and check it out. Something I wanted to tell you about the non-normal checklist, as I told you before, we have many of them. So I did my best to put all together, uh, add some FCTM comments, and also I added a few comments from the Boeing 737 MRG app. Again, I want to thank uh, Captain Pat Boone for allowing me to use some extracts from this amazing app. If you guys don't have it, please check it out. I'm going to leave a link in the description below so you can go there and see what you can do with that app. It's really good. So let's start with the abnormal operations. And we are going to uh, talk about all these checklists we have here. We'll start with the runaway stabilizer. Uh, first of all, a uh, few comments from the MRG electric uh, runaway characteristics. The stabilizer train wheel spins at higher speed. The runaway stops when placing the stabilizer cutout switches to cut out. The runaway stops when moving the control column in opposite direction. Moving the control column opposite to the uncommanded train motion opens the control column stabilizer train cutout switches. This action stops an electric runaway. If runaway continues when placing both switches to cut out, you can suspect an aerodynamic runaway dual failure of brake system. Do not displace the control column in the opposite direction. Use electric trim to contract the trim runaway. Here you have what the FCTM says about the runaway stabilizer. Again, I'm not going to read all of it, I just highlighted a few things I believe are important to know. Feel free, guys, to go through it, read it in detail. It has really good information there. So if we go to the checklist itself, I highlighted a few things that change on this checklist. Uh, we have the runaway stabilizer. We have the memory items. Now it says control column and thrust levers, control airplane pitch attitude and airspeed. Main electric stabilizer trim, reduce control column forces. Here, stabilizer, trim manually. A two-pilot effort may be used to correct an out-of-trim condition. Note, and this is important to know, reducing air speed reduces air loads on the stabilizer, which can reduce the effort needed to manually trim. Anticipate trim requirements. Do not re-engage the autopilot or autothrottle. Here you have the whole checklist. Please go through it, as I told you before. Now let's go to the old flaps uh, up landing. And here we have a few comments from the FCTM. Again, here I highlighted things I believe are important, but please take your time to go through it. Now, if we read the checklist, do this checklist only when directed by the trailing edge flaps up landing checklist. Set BRF 40 plus 55 knots. Limit bank angle to 15 degrees when air speed is less than the flap sub maneuvering speed. And then you continue with the defer items on the, the, the same checklist. The go around says do the normal go around procedure except limit bank angle to 15 degrees when the air speed is less than flap sub maneuvering speed. Accelerate to flap sub maneuvering speed. Remember the ground proximity flap inhibit switch goes to flap inhibit. Uh, in the landing checklist, note the speed brake lever will not move beyond the flight attempt on landing and the spoilers will not fully deploy. A few comments from the MRG, choose runway, weather forecast at ETA after fuel burn off and landing minimum scat one, avoid wet runway and crosswind, verify obstacles for straight ahead go around. Go around, go around with flaps up, Limit bank angle to 15 degrees when the speed is below flap sub speed. You can advise ATC, you will land with high speed and no flaps. A straight ahead go around due to limit bank. And you can talk to fire services uh, for them to inspect the landing gear after landing. And the brakes reach maximum heating about 10 to 15 minutes after landing. As such, it makes no sense to block the runway after landing. Auto slat fail. The checklist says continue normal operation. And here you have the elevator tap vibration. Do not use speed brakes or change aircraft configuration to reduce air speed. 
do not reduce your speed below the minimum speed for the existing flap setting and gross weight. Consider landing at the nearest suitable airport. Do not deploy speed brakes in flight. Feel differential pressure. Continue normal operation. Low pressure for the flight controls. The flight control switch affected side confirm standby rudder. And now let's talk about the jammed or restricted flight controls. Here we have the FCTM. Go through it, read the whole thing. You are going to get really good information from it. If we go to the checklist and a few things I highlighted here, do not turn off any flight control switches. Bank angle has to be limited to 15 degrees. Plan to land at the nearest suitable airport. Plan a flap 15 landing. Normal uh, go around procedure. However, you need to advance trust to go around smoothly and slowly to avoid excessive pitch up. The ground proximity flap inhibit switch goes to flap inhibit. And just a reminder here, flap 15 green lights. If we talk about the leading edge flaps transit non-normal checklist, do not use FMC performance predictions with any flaps or slats extended. Depending on the case, uh, if trailing edge flaps are up, you have to limit the airspeed speed to 230 knots maximum. And here, if you've encountered roll or not, if you don't, Role may be difficult to identify with the autopilot engaged. If we keep going here on the step six, choose one. Lights for only one leading edge device is illuminated. Limit air speed to 300 knots, 280 knots for turbulent air penetration or 0.65 Mach, whichever is lower. If light for more than one leading edge device is illuminated, limit air speed to 230 knots maximum. Plan a flat 15 landing, set ref 15 plus 15 knots, and limit bank angle to 15 degrees when airspeed is less than flap sub maneuvering speed. Ground proximity flap inhibit switch, flap inhibit. And in the landing checklist, uh, you can see here it says flap 15 green or amber light. We can read the note here. The light may be green or amber depending on the cause of the failure. FCTM says, if an asymmetrical or skewed leading edge device condition occurs, use the leading edge flaps transit non normal checklist to determine the flap setting and V ref for approach. V ref provides 15 degrees bank angle maneuver capability and allows for 15 degrees overshoot protection in all cases. Note if the gear is retracted during a go around and flap position is greater than 25, a landing gear configuration warning occurs. Mach trim fail, limit air speed to 280 knots, Mach 0.82. A speed brake do not arm. Do not arm the speed brake for landing manually. Deploy the speed brakes immediately upon landing. On the landing checklist, it says a speed brake down detent. Now, if we go to the speed trim fail, non normal checklist, it says continue normal operation. A speed brakes extended, non normal checklist. You need to choose one here in flight, a speed brake lever armed on the ground, a speed brake lever down the tent. If the light stays illuminated, do not take off. Stabilizer out of trim. Note momentary illumination of the stub out of trim light during large changes in trim requirements is normal. Choose one, stabilizer is trimming, continue normal operation. Is a stabilizer is not trimming then you need to go to step two and follow these steps. In step six, it says choose one, a stabilizer response to electric trim inputs, do not re-engage the autopilot or auto throttle. Stabilizer does not respond to electric trim inputs. You need to go to the stabilizer trim inoperative checklist on this QRH. Now we can talk about it, stabilizer trim inoperative, this note here is important. Reducing air speed reduces air loads on the stabilizer, which can reduce the effort needed to manually trim. If the failure could be due to ice accumulation, descent to a warmer temperature and attempt again to trim manually. Expect higher than normal elevator forces during approach and landing. The thrust reduction at flare will cause a nose down pitch. Plan a flat 15 landing, 
set ref15 or vref eyes. On the go around, do the normal go around procedure. Advance thrust to go around smoothly and slowly to avoid excessive pitch up. Landing configuration, establish landing configuration early on final approach. Ground proximity flap inhibit switch goes to flap inhibit. And remember on the landing checklist, we need to confirm flaps 15 for landing and green light. What the FCTM says about this, the most common reason is a failed stabilizer motor. This failure mode causes a loss of electric trim through both the autopilot and control wheel switches. And here in this part, you can know about less common failure modes that are also addressed using the stabilizer trim in operative non-normal checklist. Standby rotor on, we need to choose one. I just highlighted this one here for the first option. Standby rotor on light is illuminated with no other flight deck indications, so you have to avoid large or abrupt rotor pedal inputs. The FCTM says the standby rotor on light illuminates anytime the standby rotor PCU is operating. If this light illuminates independent of crew action or hydraulic system malfunction, either of two conditions may have occurred. So here is going to explain you those conditions. Feel free to uh, read it. I think it's good to know. Okay. Now let's talk about the trailing edge flap asymmetry. And uh, the FCTM says if a trailing edge flap asymmetry occurs, full maneuver capability exists even if the asymmetry occurred at flaps just out of the full up position. Burn off fuel to reduce landing weight and lower approach speed. Now let's see what the MRG says here. There are two flap position transmitters, one per wind. A failure of a single transmitter could lead to an asymmetry indication. If aileron roll is encountered in flight with the control wheel kept horizontal, you are dealing with a real asymmetry. If no roll is sensed, a failure of the transmitter may be the culprit. Now, if we go to the checklist, set the flap lever to the nearest detent that is equal to or less than the smallest indicator flap position. Why is this? This step is to drive the speed tape. The bottom of the upper red and black bar flap extend the plucker speed, and the adjacent yellow bar next flap position plucker speed on the speed tape follow the flap lever setting, respectively the actual flap position. That's why we have to do this step here. Caution, do not attempt to move the trailing edge flaps with the alternate flap switch because there is no asymmetry protection. Do not use FMC performance predictions with any flaps or slats extended. If we go to step two and we go to this option here, flap lever is set to one or greater and less than 15, consider burning off fuel to reduce touchdown speed, set ref 40 plus 30 knots. And then we continue with the checklist. If we go to the defer items and the same checklist landing data, V ref as directed by checklist and you set the minimums. Additional defer items, if the flap lever is set to less than 30, Ground proximity flap inhibit switch flap inhibit go to landing checklist below. And here we can read the flap setting. We have green or amber light. And the same note we read before, the light can be green or amber depending on the cause of the failure. Trailing edge flap disagree, no normal checklist. Here we can read from the 737 MRG. There may be several reasons for the flaps not moving to the commanded position such as a broken flap lever cable. However, a disagreement may also be caused by a malfunctioning trailing edge flaps indicator or failure of the flap slat electronic unit. The checklist, if we go to this step, step two, indicator flap position is 30 or greater and less than 40, land using existing flaps. If the indicator flap position is 15 or greater and less than 30, you can also land using existing flaps. Number four, plan to extend flaps to 15 using alternate flap extension. Note, alternate flap extension time to flaps 15 is approximately two minutes. The drag penalty with the leading edge devices extended can make it impossible to reach the alternate field. 
set vref15 or vref ice. If we go to the additional deferred items, indicator flap position is 15 or greater and less than 30, ground proximity flap inhibit switch flap inhibit, indicator flap position is less than 15, the flap inhibit switch goes to flap inhibit as well. If you're using the alternate flaps position switch, if flap asymmetry occurs, release the switch immediately. There is no asymmetry protection. As flaps are extending, it's slow to respect the maneuvering speed. If we go to uh, these options here and the indicator flap position is one or greater and less than 15 after attempting alternate flap extension, land using existing flaps, consider burning off fuel to reduce touchdown speed, set b rest 40 plus 30 knots. All right, trailing edge flap sub landing non normal checklist. We need to choose one. This option, trailing edge flap asymmetry, does not exist. Do this checklist only when directed by the trailing edge flap disagree checklist. Some comments here, many of them we have read them before in the different checklists we have reviewed. Uh, go around procedure review, do the normal go around procedure except. Limit bank angle to 15 degrees when their speed is less than flap sub maneuvering speed. Accelerate to flap sub maneuvering speed. Do not exceed 230 knots with leading edge devices extended. And then you guys can finish reading the rest of the checklist right there. Yield damper. Non normal checklist. MRG says the main yield damper uses hydraulic system B. When system B pressure is lost, the yaw damper can no longer operate. So in this checklist, uh, yaw damper switch off then on. If the light extinguishes, that's the end of the checklist. If the yaw damper light stays illuminated, yaw damper switch off. And you need to go to step three, which says avoid areas of predicted moderate or severe turbulence. If turbulence is encountered and passenger comfort becomes affected, reduce air speed and or descend to a lower altitude. Do not exceed flaps there. So guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to my channel yet, please do it now. And don't forget to hit the bell so you will be notified once I upload a new video. And if you think these videos could be useful for somebody else, please share them. That's going to help me a lot to grow the channel. Next week, we are going to start reviewing landing gear. So please stay tuned for those videos. Until then, guys, take care and hope to see you soon.